Well, after about uh, 45 minutes of a lot of fun, um, we actually started in one spot to, to put this water hole in and uh, hit some rocks. We had to move it over. Um, so all, we all worked at cutting some roots and, and getting the water hole in here. Uh, I'd like to get in a little bit deeper. Um, we still have some area that we can fill in around the top side to help funnel water into it when we get a heavy rain. And that's important because we want it to self-fill as much as possible. We can drag some water in here, but again, it is uphill, so if the rain could fill it up, even better. Um, what I like to do is we've set this water hole. It's about 25 yards from the tree. Uh, very important. And we put this water hole in. The water hole, again, is not going to attract more deer into this area. It's simply going to define where they travel. So we're taking deer out of an already outstanding bedding area offering them water. They're sitting out there in the afternoon dry all day and then they can hit this water hole on the way to their food source which is down below and the first food source is probably about 150 yards away from here. There's a series of food plots going down into a hidden valley. Uh, so we're hoping to pull deer well past here out into the food, uh, the food that's completely hidden and get those deer out earlier so we can shoot a mature buck going by. Um, with that water hole, you know, obviously it's set up for a bow shot. 25 yards away. Um, really, if you have a great spot for a water hole, but you don't have a great spot for a stand location, move the water hole. Uh, it does you no good to attract deer to a certain spot or to find that movement to a certain spot uh, if you don't have a stand there. Uh, when we're finished with this water hole, I typically like to put a third to sometimes even half um, the volume in there and fill it with uh, soil. And uh, the water becomes stagnant, warm. Um, I believe the minerals in the soil make it more attractive and natural, no different than a mud hole in the, in the woods. Uh, you'll find that water sinks down throughout that mud and you'll actually have deer that'll take their hooves and push it deep in there and stick that muzzle seven, eight inches down to the soil and still drink when it appears there's no water there. Um, but again, I think it uh, makes it a little bit more natural. We have some more uh, filling to do around the top side of this to help uh, drain the water into here. But between the stand location, it's already a good spot. The three trails converging right here. Outstanding bedding area up there. Food source over here. Stand location is right down here. We should have a great spot to come into in the evening, let our scent filter downhill with the thermals into the uh, neighbor's house and, and yard area, which is about 250 yards away. And we can just sit off to the side of this movement and watch. At the same time, this is a great bench going east to west uh, where we can expect a lot of cruising activity during the pre-rut and rut. So overall, great early season stand in the evening. By the time we get into the pre-rut and rut, this is a good all day stand where we can expect deer to really not have to travel too far from that bedding area to get down to this location.